we'll go over 10 of the best startup books for founders to read. When it comes to building a better startup, each of the books on this list offers a unique perspective. They can assist you in gathering critical feedback, iterating and improving your concept, and turning it into a viable business. So, without further ado, let us begin the list with book number one. Top Book Startup Entrepreneur Should Read The Lean Startup by Eric Ries Sprint by Jake Knapp The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey A. Moore Start at the End by Matt Waller Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller Traction by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Mayers Contagious by Jonah Berger Blue Ocean Strategy by W. Chan Kim and Rene Maubergen. Zero to One by Peter Thiel. One, The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. This is a must read book for anyone starting a business because it emphasizes the importance of identifying and clarifying your startup's underlying assumptions early in the process. It focuses primarily on two assumptions, the value assumption and the growth assumption. So, with the value assumption, there will be some underlying belief that customers will value and appreciate what you're aiming to create, and number two, there's going to be some assumption about how you plan to attract customers to the business in a profitable way. So this book is all about figuring out what those assumptions are and finding cheap ways to test and validate them before you spend a lot of time, energy, or money building out the business processes around that core idea. Two. Sprint by Jake Knapp. This book discusses Google Ventures' distinct five-day process for answering critical questions early in the product development process. It picks up where the lean startup left off in many ways because that book focuses on why you should do things like an MVP or a prototype to ensure that you're validating your idea early on. However, this book provides numerous frameworks, tactics, tools, and systems for doing so more effectively. So while the Lean Startup does cover some of that, I would say this book is a strong complement because it goes into much much more detail about exactly how to build a prototype for whatever your idea is and gather critical feedback to ensure that you're moving in the right direction. So if you need to solve a big problem, break out of a rut, or make quick progress on a very difficult challenge, I recommend that you use the 5-day sprint week format to solve those kinds of problems. 3. The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick One of the quickest ways to improve your idea very early on, even before you build something like a prototype or a minimum viable product, is to talk with early potential customers to simply express to them what you're trying to solve and to get their feedback even before you start to lock down what you plan to build. One of the major issues we face when we share our idea with early potential customers is that we are frequently looking for early validation for our idea. And all too often, we make the mistake of attempting to sell the concept rather than gathering truly useful information and feedback at this early stage. As a result of all of this we frequently end up gathering false support or encouragement because people are simply trying to be polite. So we share what we're working on, explain it, put our ego on the line, they pick up on the fact that we're really hoping for some encouragement, and they offer some kind of encouragement again to be socially acceptable or simply polite. So this book is all about how to properly converse with potential customers in order to obtain useful and honest information that you can use to iterate and improve your idea even before building something like a prototype. It's all about how to communicate with people so that you get the most out of the conversation in terms of honest information that you can actually use rather than just seeking early validation. So an absolute must read really early on in the startup journey. 4. Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey A. Moore This book will teach you how to market and sell disruptive products successfully. And the reason this is so important for startups is that a large portion of this book is dedicated to explaining the various types of customers with whom you will interact throughout the startup and even full-fledged business journey. So it explains the various types of people you'll meet along the way and the various things they value at various stages of your business. So I'll give you two quick examples, there are others, but these are the two. 
There are early adopters, people who love to try new things and will go out of their way to try new things, new solutions, and new interesting ways to solve a problem. Then there are pragmatist mainstream customers who are unwilling to try new things. In fact, they prefer tried and true proven solutions and it's critical to understand that while early adopters are typically the first type of customer or one of the first that you'll encounter with a startup, they represent a relatively small portion of the overall market. And if you can make your way or cross the chasm over to pragmatist mainstream customers, this is a much larger group that can ultimately allow your business to thrive. So it's critical to understand the various types of customers you'll encounter, what they value and how you can eventually transition from these early adopters to this much larger audience of mainstream customers so you can increase your revenues and profits over time. 5. Start at the End by Matt Waller This book is about creating products that can influence customer behavior and as the title implies, it's all about starting at the end and being very clear about how you want customers to use or engage with your product or service. How you want it to change the world or their behavior, and then you work backwards from that to design the product or service so that that outcome is significantly more likely. And the book goes into great detail about how to do this. How to design a product so that certain outcomes are much more likely, and if you can do this correctly, if you apply these ideas in the right way you can increase product usage, adoption and engagement, which can of course lead to more positive reviews, increased word of mouth referral and even future repeat purchases because customers are getting significantly more value out of whatever it is that you've created.